Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Scared Stiff, a Hong Kong thriller comedy flick from 1987 that stars Eric Tsang, Michael Mew, and Chow Yun-Fat. Now I saw this movie back in the day, but recently noticed that it got a Hong Kong physical media release, and I immediately purchased it because I remembered one very specific awesome scene involving Chow Yun-Fat. It's like one of the greatest scenes of his entire career. So, it arrives in the mail, and as I'm getting ready to fire up the physical media, you know, getting ready to review it for the channel, I just referenced my old notes. And that's when I noticed an unfortunate fact. I somehow forgot that I actually disliked the rest of the film. So, this was a legitimate fail grade movie as well. So, I reluctantly <laughs> rewatched the film. But did I enjoy it more this time around? Let's find out. So doctors attempt to explore a dude's psychic mind while a murderer hunts down his friend. So one day, these guys, their names are David and Haley. Uh, they're injured in a car crash. All right, now, Haley suffers just slight injuries, but David is dead for all intents and purposes, except his brain waves, which still are very active, and doctors are confused, you know, they try to figure this out. They basically pronounce him dead. But then, to everyone's surprise, when Haley cries over his corpse, he bursts back into life. And then it goes from there. Now, I initially thought that Scared Stiff was a ripoff of an American movie called Dead Heat, which a lot of people haven't seen, but, you know, the plots are vaguely familiar. But after some research, I discovered that the American film was actually released in the following year, so that's not possible. Apparently, Scared Stiff was instead inspired by a movie called Dreamscape, which came out in 1984. I've actually never seen that movie, but I watched the trailer, and it looks quite different from this one. So, it might have just been like uh, a true inspiration. Now, the opening date scene in this movie, we get Eric saying he goes out on, on a date with a girl... It has kind of a more subtle kind of humor, I would say. You know, he's being very standoffish while the woman is attempting to bed him. And the situation becomes even more extreme when he enters his house. And uh, things go from there. I did like the introduction quite a lot this time around. It's, it's smile-worthy. And we get more, like, uh, humor early on where guys are trying to get laid. It's like that's the kind of humor that we get in the opening section of the film. It's all right. You know, Eric saying dress up like a robot to, like, uh, deceive a woman at one point. You know, it's, it's mildly amusing stuff. But I will say that Tsang's performance in this movie can get a little bit irritating at times. Maybe a little bit too whiny for its own good. Uh, but uh, there is a funny scene involving a, a criminal lineup in a police station that I thought was probably the funniest uh, joke of the movie. So overall, the comedy is just kind of, like, decent. You know, it's, it's hit or miss but it's decent overall. Now, you're probably asking yourself, this sounds like a silly comedy, but Eric described it as a thriller comedy about a murderer. So, is that where the thriller elements come in? And yes, that's exactly what happens. There are a few bloody death scenes, some murder-stalker scenes, and uh, one of this guy's dreams has like obvious thriller elements to it, even a little bit of a horror slant. Um, because he has, like, this out-of-body experience in the middle of the movie where he befriends a priest who's killing vampires. And these are, like, Western-style vampires, mostly. Uh, the scene only lasts maybe, like, ten minutes, and it has nothing to do with the rest of the film. You know what I mean? Like, we know that, that our main character has, like, these weird brain waves, right? And he has, like, these out-of-body experiences, and he can get into other people's dreams sometimes. But then, like, this this vampire hunter scene pops up out of nowhere, and you're like, all right, is this guy in, like, an alternate dimension now? Like, what is going on? And the vampires don't show up again for the rest of the film. So that basically brings to like brings us to the worst part of Scared Stiff, and that's the script writing. I mean, this movie is all over the place. It's practically schizophrenic in its writing. And some scenes feel like they should be in an entirely different film. Very little focus or direction at play. And because of this, like, there's certain portions, like the middle section, get pretty boring, all right? The, uh, I personally began to check out of the film during the make-out kissing scene on the boat. And you're just like, 
at that point, I was just like shaking my head, wondering if this movie would ever pull itself together. Like it was starting to get on my nerves. And then something happened. Chow Yun-Fat shows up. And it's almost as if everyone working on the film got together and were like, all right, guys, okay, we need to stop goofing around and being lazy. We need to actually try to make a real movie now. <laughs> and then the final 40 minutes of the movie are like this huge improvement over everything that came before it. Primarily because the story and conflict become more focused. And uh, you have this dangerous murderer who shows up and he, he needs to be dealt with. Now, it comes out of left field, the, this conflict, but it's engaging and the protagonists find themselves in grave danger, which is good. It adds actually some stakes here. And better yet, we get some actual set pieces. So there's a good lengthy chase attack scene in a parking lot, uh, parking garage, and an office building kind of transitions. And it involves this dangerous murderer. There are a few surprising moments that I was not expecting, and the finale is pretty insane, uh, in a good way, in a good way. Now, I'm not going to tell you what happens, but it was quite a bit of fun. And then as an added bonus, we get some other actors who kind of just show up out of nowhere. Uh, so I would recommend not looking at the full cast list if you're going in to watch this, because there are a few surprises if you're you know, a fan of Hong Kong cinema. So that's really like the story of this film. I really think Scared Stiff could have been like a classic from like the 80s if someone had actually like reworked like the first half of the film. Even if you wanted to keep it mostly comedy, maybe just uh, thread it together a little better, you know, take out the stupid boat scene, you know, create, maybe introduce the murderer earlier on, you know, and just kind of thread it together a little bit more nicely. As it stands, it is worth watching for the second half especially. And, uh... And because the stronger half of the film is the second half, it is kind of satisfying despite its flaws. Like, there are some pretty cool stuff uh, in this. Truly an uneven, bonkers movie, but it is a little bit different. So, I would, like, cautiously recommend this, but you gotta, you gotta prepare yourself to slog through some, some uneven comedy and a few dull moments during the opening half. Now, it currently has a Blu-ray and DVD release from Hong Kong. I think I bought my copy on the DDD House website. So if you've seen this one, let me know what you think. And uh, as always, folks, I'll see you next time.